If you've been on the internet in the past five years, chances are you know what Undertale is. What could be said about Undertale that hasn't already been said? Undertale was an unassuming little Kickstarter project made with Game Maker by a man who calls himself Toby Fox. Before Undertale, Toby was known in the Earthbound slash Mother series modding community as well as being the composer for several tracks for the popular Homestuck webcomic. He raised a little over $50,000 on his Kickstarter campaign to get Undertale out the door and onto the market, and what happened next was truly unprecedented. Making over $20 million in revenue off of Steam sales alone, Toby went from, in his own words, eating leftover spaghetti in his mom's basement to being thrust into the public eye. He has, in my opinion very intelligently, for the most part kept his real identity secret. He appears only as a self-insert character, the annoying dog. Even on the livestream 6th anniversary event that happened earlier this year, he only appeared as a plush version of the dog using text-to-speech. Undertale's popularity speaks for itself. One of the songs from the game, Megalovania, has 75 million views on one upload of the song on YouTube alone. But this really isn't about Undertale. This video is more about the until recently lesser known pseudo-sequel, Toby, being a private person and also concerned if he would ever live up to the bar of expectations Undertale has set for himself, he released the first chapter with little fanfare for free in October of 2018. However, it was only when Chapter 2 was also released for free just in the past month that the game really started exploding in popularity as it was the big reveal at the end of the 6th anniversary stream. I called Deltarune a pseudo-sequel because that's pretty much what it is. Toby, being ever cryptic with his explanations, says that it's best to consider Deltarune an entirely different project. Fans, however, aren't going to buy that very easily, considering Deltarune has many characters that are straight from Undertale, straight down to the titles of the two games being anagrams of each other. That, on top of there being clear hints that the two games are connected, Fans are discussing tirelessly how the two connect and the mysteries that are still unsolved in both games. Enough about the lore surrounding the game though, let's talk about what it actually is. While all the witty dialogue you'd come to expect from the first game is all still there, the gameplay has been vastly improved. Deltarune is a combination between a traditional turn-based RPG and a bullet hell, just like its predecessor. Also like Undertale, players have the option to go through the game solving problems with violence or convincing their enemies to stand down through acting and sparing. This time, however, Toby included another way to deal with enemies called Pacify. In this game, you can make your enemies tire by damaging enough times without completely defeating them, which lets you fight battles normally while still continuing the game as technically a pacifist. You now have multiple party members, and the battle screen takes on more of a classic Final Fantasy aesthetic than the first game's Earthbound-inspired battle scenes, making things much more interesting to look at. Having multiple party members isn't just for show either. These additional party members allow the player to take up to three different actions in any given turn, opening up many more tactical options than before. And it's needed, as the fights in Deltarune ramp up in difficulty much faster than they did in Undertale. In harder fights, you'll often find yourself balancing your resources between deciding to act to push the fight along, defending the party member who is low on health, and keeping everyone's health high enough so nobody goes down during the battle. Many actions require the new TP resource, which is gained by either defending or utilizing the game's new graze mechanic, something that fans of the Toho series may recognize. Take a close look at the attack on screen right now. Every time the player gets close to an on-screen bullet but doesn't get hit by it, they are rewarded with TP, allowing them to make more actions faster and push the fight along. This is a very welcome risk-reward mechanic that also in a way lets the player organically choose how difficult they want the fight to be. For example, some players may decide to take it slow and dodge attacks very wide. They'll be safer from damage, but the fights will take longer since they will need to build TP by defending instead. Or, you can take the risky route and get close to the enemy's attacks to get through faster but small mistakes can quickly spiral out of control if you're not careful and have party members go down. Moving on from the combat, let's talk more about the game overall. Chapter 2 was just released a month ago, three years after the first chapter came out for free. This was a surprise to fans everywhere since Toby previously said that he only wanted to release Deltarune once all the chapters were complete past the first. However, Toby felt compelled to finish and release chapter 2 early, partially due to not putting anything out for several years, but also partly to give his fans something during the ongoing global lockdowns. Coming from Undertale, where the player's choices made so much of an impact on the plot, 
Deltarune Chapter 1 may have been a bit off-putting because aside from very minor dialogue changes, the player's choice to be violent or not really didn't matter. This was combined with Toby Fox himself going out and saying that there would only be one ending for Deltarune, which he has now changed in the description to have a question mark at the end, implying there may be more in store. This is further reinforced with the new recruiting system introduced in Chapter 2. In Chapter 1, it didn't matter whether you attacked with your weapon or spared with acting, but now in Chapter 2, if you spare enough of an enemy type, you can recruit them to come back to your home base as a character you can talk to. Alternatively, you can still choose to dispatch with violence anyway. Enemies that you finish off with violence will become lost, becoming forever unrecruitable. However, you will get stronger as a result. This clever system putting players' morals to the test has become a bit of a hallmark in Toby Fox's writing style. Exploring the morality of abusing video game characters was a heavy theme in Undertale, and it is in Delta Room as well. The question Toby Fox is asking is this. How many players are willing to do the right thing, even if it means making the experience harder for themselves? Is the well-being of video game characters even worth worrying about? While all the game's systems urge the player to use non-violent methods as much as possible, beginning in Chapter 2 there's a hidden route that may be familiar to people who have played Undertale. But, it is much more hidden and may take some trial and error figuring it out yourself without looking up a guide. I recommend you play through the game first yourself before looking anything up about it. How the story will progress into Chapter 3 and on is definitely keeping everyone on the edge of their seats. The last thing I want to talk about is the music. Undertale's popularity is in no small part due to Toby Fox's musical composition skill, and Deltarune's soundtrack is on par with, if not better than that. The songs play a part in telling the story just as much as the dialogue does, with heavy use of leitmotifs that get rearranged and remixed throughout the game. If it is one basic thing that Toby Fox's style can be boiled down to, it is intention. Everything is made with extreme care and purpose, and nothing is ever a mere coincidence. This goes even as far as Toby saying that he had thrown out some completely finished songs simply because the motif didn't fit with the rest of the game. The range of the songs are wide too. There are some tracks that are catchy, some that are foreboding, some that get your blood pumping, and there are even some that are genuinely haunting. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that a large part of the game's appeal comes just from the soundtrack itself. It's genuinely mind-blowing how much emotional impact the tracks can evoke, while the songs still being for the most part stylistically simple and easy to digest. This isn't to say that every single track is going to resonate with everyone, but most people will find themselves humming these tracks weeks after they finish the game. For the bottom line, Chapters 1 and 2 of Deltarune are simply fantastic and should be considered a must-play for any fan of RPGs, especially those who love Undertale. And there's no reason to not try it. It's completely free. You can grab a download for Chapters 1 and 2 on Steam for the PC, the Nintendo Switch, or the PSN Store for PS4. Toby Fox has said that the next release will include Chapters 3 through 5 and will cost money at that point. Although he said he hasn't decided on a price for it yet, he did say it's going to be more expensive than Undertale. Which is understandable, considering Chapters 1 and 2 alone are pretty much already as long as Undertale was in the first place. The only thing really left to be said at this point is to go check it out, and hopefully the next chapter is released faster than the 3 year gap between Chapters 1 and 2. This has been Mentor Mike, and enjoy the rest of the stream.